So good morning. This is Bill Langdon. And I want to present joint work with Oliver Kress, where we were looking at evolving data within programs. So most work has concentrated on evolving source code, but here we're going to be looking at evolving data. Um, because of that, I'm going to gloss over the parts of uh, where we change uh, code manually and concentrate just on the evolution of data. In the, in the slides, you'll see various parts are um, underlined in blue, and those are hyperlinks to uh, stuff external. So as I said, mostly uh, genetic improvement work is concentrated on evolving source code. Here we look at data, uh, we'll show examples where we've evolved programs which are uh, give better functionality or indeed new functionality. Uh, but potentially evolution of data could also do things like retain existing functionality, but simply improve the program, maybe make it faster, maybe make it use less energy. In terms of why we might want to do this, uh, maybe um, changing the code uh, might um, be less acceptable. Um, so if we can change data rather than code, that might be more acceptable to, to users. Uh, in terms of your own work, this might be an easy route into GI. You can take your favorite optimization tool, apply it to numbers within the program, uh, simply having a, an objective measure, which is how well does that new um, program behave. Um, perhaps it's x percent better, in which case the x becomes the objective measure for your technique. In terms of why we're looking at reciprocal, uh, to be honest, this is simply an example of using jetting improvement on data. Um, in principle, uh, because the evolved reciprocal function doesn't use division uh, on machines, possibly low-end machines use remote computing or Internet of Things, uh, the division may be very slow or indeed not supported in the hardware, in which case multiplication by the uh, evolved reciprocal function could be quicker than uh, division. In terms of existing work, uh, this is this work in EuroGP from two years ago, uh, where we looked at evolving data within RNA fold to give better predictions on average. Here we're looking at evolving uh, functions within the GNU mathematical library uh, to give new functionality. In future, you might look at um, using uh, evolution to give um, better uh, functionality or um, indeed just faster programs. So uh, RNA fold is about 7,000 lines of code, uh, contains 50,000 uh, integers. And what we were able to show was that on average, um, GI could find uh, new parameters which gave better predictions. This, uh, co uh, these changes have been incorporated in the official release and been available for two years. Um, more recently, we've looked at ev um, evolving data inside the GNU C library, in particular the data-driven version of the square root function. Um, and we've been able to show that it's possible to transform that data to support cube root, log to base two, uh, inverse square root, which is often used uh, for normalization in graphics or neural networks. And here we're going to concentrate on the reciprocal function. These two graphs are simply to highlight the difference between 
the square root and the reciprocal function. Uh, what we're going to do is take the uh, PowerPC implementation from the GNU uh, library. What that implementation of square root does is to devise, divide the normalized input to square root into 50, <coughs> into 512 bins, and each bin represents the start of the newton raphson method. So newton raphson was originally devised by Sir Isaac Newton. It's a very fast method of um, finding the roots of um, mathematical equations. Um, in cases where the uh, cases as here, where the functionality is um, well behaved, it converges quadratically. So it, in the case of having a good start value, Newton Raphson will converge on the best possible um, floating point answer within three iterations. So what we're going to do is we're going to for each of our 512 bins, we're going to run CMES, which is a fast optimizer. Uh, we seed it with the square root data. And we run CMES with the function uh, to take the reciprocal. Um, and that gives us a value. That value, if we invert it, should give us back the original value. And our objective function for CMAS is simply the difference between 1 over C and X. So if we got the exactly the right answer, that difference would be zero. Uh, if we're slightly off, then Newton graphs may not converge precisely. And so the goal is to get the right start point for the Newton graphs. So we do converge uh, to exactly the right answer. Uh, we test, uh, for each bin, we test uh, the evolved value, uh, taking the smallest value in the bin, the midpoint, and the maximum. So we have three test values. Usually, a CMAS produces uh, the absolute best answer on all three. If not, uh, then we restart and run CMAS on this bin again. This graph simply emphasizes that uh, CMAS is finding good values. External to, uh, to CMAS, we've tested the Evolve code literally many thousands of times. Uh, it works, it always gives uh, the correct answer to within double precision. Um, and uh, one thing I should stress is this is a for CMAS. This is an easy problem uh, to run all 512 bins. Uh, it took less than six seconds, and and I'm sure that this this technique could be um, expanded, or people could use their own um, their own techniques of data within their own programs. So what we have uh, is a world that's addicted to software. Um, that software has to be maintained. And that maintenance is now the dominant cost of computing. It's, the cost is not in the hardware. The cost is in the software. And one of the aspects of maintaining that software is simply keeping parameters within the code up to date. Uh, it may need to respond to new scientific data, uh, new laws or regulations, and also changes in circumstance where you might have new users with new expectations, or you might be running uh, an existing program on new devices, but that those devices uh, need tuning. So again, we might want to use evolution or some other optimization technique to improve the values within the code. The search can be can be very fast, but so far there's been uh, very little research in this area. Uh, it seems there is great scope for for opt optimization. 
So to summarize, um, the problem of maintaining data within the code has been largely ignored. Uh, we've shown that genetic improvement can improve not just source code, but data within existing programs. Uh, you might want to use your own optimizer um, with objectives like, can you improve the battery life? Can you make code run faster? Can you make it give better predictions and so on? Here we've concentrated on a particular problem. So um, we want to evolve mathematical functions by transforming the original square root function. We've shown we can generate cube root, log to base two, uh, the inverse square root, and here the reciprocal function. There's a replication a package available on GitHub. And finally, the, 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 the software is not a fragile, it's obviously a polemic because you can make changes and lose your probe going to Venus. But if you're prepared to try again, if you're prepared to try multiple times, you're prepared to have a population of mutants, um, put mutants on top of mutants, um, cross mutants over with other, other individuals, then you too can evolve uh, surprising and results. Thank you.